Hey, Bunny. Yes? If you are a longtime listener of this show, then you know two things about us. Number one, of course, Bunny's undying love of Jan Michael Vincent movies. You are always going on about Jan Michael Vincent movies. It's ridiculous. Yes, yes. Him and Dennis Quaid, because they're frankly yeah. interchangeable. Yeah. And number two, my own deep personal love of history. I am a regular historicanistonite, yes. which is a technical term that only us historicistonites know about. But I'm also a storyteller with my own unique style. And so what I like to do here on the show. Thank you, Eleanor. What I like to do here on the show is I like getting a little known story from history and I like to rework it via my own original unique razzmatazz, which is a show that people, which is a word that people should use more of. And that, my friends, is where we are. Another exciting installment of our long running feature on the Pope on Film podcast, Steve's Historical approximations or shap as i like to call it i like shap yes it has a good ring to it shap and this week we are discussing the world's best-selling barbie doll in the history of barbies okay this is the best-selling barbie that has ever been sold ever spoiler alert it's not a barbie okay hint hint so bunny Barbie dolls. What yes. Did you tell Let's talk Barbie dolls. What did you tell him? If we're talking about, if we're talking about the world of toys, I think the Beatles said it best when they sang, "I'm a Barbie girl in a Barbie world." Yes. I'm plastic. It's fantastic. My favorite Beatles song. Yes. Yeah. I believe it was. I believe it was. John Lennon, who sang, You Can Braid My Hair, Undress Me Everywhere. <laughs> Come on, Barbie. Let's go party. Um, it's difficult to discuss the, the history of Barbie dolls because much like Monopoly, there's, no the, idea how this works. there's the corporate history of Barbie, and then there's the real history of Barbie. Yes. So the corporate story is that uh, that wi- the corporate story which the Mattel Corporation stuck to for decades um, is that inventor and businesswoman Ruth Handler saw her daughters playing with paper dolls and putting clothes on paper dolls and struggling with the one-dimensional paper clothes and yeah. folding it just properly on the one-dimensional paper dolls and then she went Eureka. And then a big light bulb went over her, went off over her head like a freaking, like a, like a Tom and Jerry cartoon. Uh huh. And so that's, that's the, the corporate story that Mattel stuck to for so long. Now here's the true story that Mattel vehemently denied for decades. Yes. Okay. Barbie is an exact replica of a German sex doll. Yes. How cool is that? Yeah. So there's a German tabloid, and it was called Build, B-I-L-D. And it used to run a sexy adult comic strip about a big-breasted blonde sex pot that they called Build Lily. So this is Lily in the magazine Build. Uh-huh. Kind of like a, um, old classic playboys used to have, like, little oral Annie cartoons. Yeah. Is is yeah? That's what Playboy used to have. Um, not that I would ever take them from my father. <laughs> it's what I can say while he's still alive. Um, so the comic strip featured a bunch of sex and nudity, and it featured just this big-breasted woman who was wearing skimpy outfits and and who, who fucked all these rich men. So men in Germany loved the character of Bill Lilly, and the tabloid is like, well. Men really seem to be liking these comic strips. How can we make more money off of this? Maybe five years before Mattel comes up with the idea of Barbie, how about a nudie action figure for horny creepos? 
great idea. So they made a 12-inch plastic Build Lily doll figure, three-dimensional, with a big bust and a, a, a butt and uh, skimpy clothes, actual cloth clothes that you could take, you could take off her or put back on. If you're having a hard time picturing it, just think of a Barbie doll because literally that's all it was. Yeah. Except it was 1955 and only horn, horny German men are buying them. <laughs> so, and, and also they're they're like placing them in dirty ass bars in Germany. Yeah. Like imagine going to like a dirt bar, and then they've got like a tiny Barbie doll that everybody's like gawking at and like grabbing and stuff. That's that's the build Lily. In 1955. So someone in Mattel saw this and said, yeah, we're just going to copy this. So they copied it 100% and boom, that's how Barbies were born. Barbie launched in 1959. The makers of Build Lily actually sued Mattel and it was settled out of court, a.k.a. guilty cough, cough, cough. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hey, y'all. Watch the So. I got to do an Amber. Uh. So Barbie sold so well, but it was just Barbie. It was just Barbie and some clothes, and that was it. Hey, Bob. And Mattel said, we need to expand this. We need to sell more things. How can we sell more Barbie products? So in 1961, Mattel introduced Barbie's boyfriend, Ken, Car Ken Carson, a blonde or brunette from Wisconsin. And then a few years later... Uh, they also introduced uh, Alan, Ken's really close buddy with finger quotes. And surprisingly, <laughs> that's not the gay part of this story. No, me and Alan? Oh, we're just buddies who like to dress alike and go on vacations together. Nothing gay about that. We're just two <laughs> close dudes, you know? Je Jeannie you know? says she had Alan. I did. You had Alan? I did. Ah. <laughs> that's Don't awesome. That's awesome. Don't you judge me. Don't you dare judge me. <laughs> you have no right judging me. <laughs> so, so the 1960s passed, the 1970s passed, the 1980s passed, and Barbie sales go up, and then they go up, and then they go way up, and then they start going slowly downhill, and that slow decline has continued all the way in 2018. In fact, Mattel as a whole isn't doing so great right now. And I imagine the closing of Toys R Us did not help them. No. I feel bad for a lot of toy companies. This is really going to hurt Lego. Lego has been having problems. Have they? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there was a whole article about it in a, in a Bloomberg Business Week back when I used to read that, when I was able to pick it up on the rack and read it for free. Anyway, yeah. it's the very early 90s now, and Ken sales fucking suck. All of the sales suck, but Ken, above all, is just, why are we making Ken if nobody wants to buy Ken? Because nobody is buying Ken. Literally, no one is buying Ken. What can we do to, to make people want to buy Ken? Because no one's buying it. So Mattel, being a big corporation, they do product testing. And they're, you know, conducting interviews and, and they do all of this work. So eventually all of this product testing and yada, yada, yada reveals that kids aren't buying Ken dolls because Ken is fucking lame. <laughs> yeah. He's a geek. He's a nerd. He's a jerk. He's a milk toast. Nobody douche waffle. Nobody wants to buy Ken. He's just not fucking cool. Hey, yeah. So... Mattel being a corporation, they decide, th so this is what we need to do. Okay, guys? We need to make a cool Ken. Okay. So cool that kids will want to buy him. Okay. Thank you all for coming to this board meeting. We need a cool Ken. Okay? It's 1993. What's cool? What's popular? What's popular with the youth? The young kids, the young people, what's cool, guys? Well, let's see. It's 1993. What's cool right now? Uh, movies about dinosaurs that kill people. The Clinton family. Massive earthquakes in Japan. Yeah. Are very big right now. Let's see. Uh, what else? Uh, Garth Brooks, Robin Williams in Drag and Alive. 
Raging Against Machines, <laughs> and Raves. That's it. Raves. We'll make a cool raver, Ken. You three. You three will be going undercover. Go to <laughs> raves. Go to raves. Go to secret nightclubs. Under go go to underground parties and just take notes about how cool raver guys dress at these secret parties. Okay. So this literally happened. Mattel employees went undercover to raves and nightclubs, and they were pretty goddamn clueless about society and raver culture, and above all, the gay lifestyle. All right. Because later at that boardroom, okay, you three, you've been undercover for weeks now. You three, give me your report. You, go first. Well, I, I I saw a lot of men, a lot of men. I went to this one club, and it was like 100% men. <laughs> I don't even know if I saw any girls there at all. Man, and you know what? They were all really friendly, because they were all dancing with each other and grinding <laughs> on each other. Oh, we had such a fun time at this man-only secret club. Anyway, let me tell you what, what men are wearing now in raver culture, mm -hmm. uh, sleeveless leather vests. Yes. <laughs> Great idea. Raving men are wearing sleeveless leather vests. Let's go with it. You, number two. You go now. Oh, well, I saw a lot of men with uh, dyed hair, like uh, frosted tips. That was, that was really cool because it's 92. Oh, and mesh, mesh shirts. All right, yeah. So many sweaty men dancing with other sweaty men wearing mesh shirts. That was very popular. Oh, yeah, you, you know what you know what was also very is also very popular in in raver culture, men touching each other's chests while they dance. That was also very popular at the underground party I went to. <laughs> what about mustaches? Huh? What about mustaches? Did they mention mustaches? No, no, but here's the best oh. part. Hi, I'm the third person. And uh, I saw an interesting thing. All I, So I went to a rave, and every guy I saw, this is cute, and I think that we could do like a, like a jewelry sort of thing with this, Ken, because every man had this cute little ring. It was like a, it was like a ring about this size. It was like a circle. These small rings, I believe they called them rooster rings. Okay. All the men were wearing these rooster rings. They were wearing them as necklaces. They, says, they would even have them sewn onto clothing in various places. Well, I think we have all we need. So in 1993, Mattel released Earring Magic Ken. Okay. Uh, Ken came with clip-on earrings that you could either wear yourself or attach to the thing that Ken wore around his neck, which was a cock ring. It was a cock ring. <laughs> Ken wore a cock ring necklace around his neck because the people who went undercover did not realize how many gay men they would be seeing at these nightclubs. So he's wearing like a... Uh, so Earring Magic Ken is wearing these like uh, black leather pants and he's wearing a neon purple sleeveless leather vest. Yeah. And then interestingly enough, um, the pocket, the left pocket of the sleeveless leather vest has a cock ring sewn into it, which means he's a bottom. <laughs> Okay. Because back in at this period in time, gay men were constantly wearing cock rings and they would sew them onto various parts of their clothes, which would indicate what they are. So Ken is a power bottom. All right. Knew he could um, do it. Knew he could do yeah, it. He's also, he's also wearing a mesh shirt. He's got frosted tips. And then my favorite part, he's got an earring stud in his left ear and only his left ear. <laughs> And he's wearing a cock ring necklace. So, uh, but the best part is, is that it, 
Mattel thought, oh, we went undercover to the rave lifestyle. This is going to be the coolest can ever. This is going to be the best-selling can ever. Let's oh promote this like it's fucking Crystal Pepsi. <laughs> or New Coke. Yeah. Because I like Crystal Pepsi. I've repeatedly talked on this podcast about how great yeah. Crystal it's just, Pepsi it's a, is. It really fucks with your senses because it's white but tastes like Pepsi? No, it's basically like a Sprite flavored Pepsi. And it's, I think it's, isn't it soda? Pepsi flavored? Huh? She drinks soda? Yeah, a little bit. She wants a sip of my soda. Yeah, go you know for it. It's Code Red her? Mountain oh, Dew. No. Are you okay with that? I mean, that? slowly but surely. Yeah. Here, you give it to her. Oh, God. Let me pause the podcast, funny, because I have to feed Mountain Dew to my child. Because that's how Oklahoma just, I have become. Just put okay. it in a little sippy cup. Walk her down. How we did with that. Okay, she made a hideous face and now she's walking away, so... That's exactly Hooray. what's supposed to happen. It's Mountain Dew, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> it's not good. Nobody drinks Mountain Dew because it tastes good. Yeah. So they promoted the shit out of Earring Magic Ken. And it was such a huge promotion. But it didn't take long for Mattel to realize that they had accidentally released Gay Power Bottom Ken. <laughs> The backlash was so ridiculously severe that this is an actual official quote from the Mattel Corporation. Okay. okay? This was in the Chicago Times as an official statement from the Mattel Toy Corporation. Don't worry. And this is true. You can look it up. They, the Mattel Corporation said, and I quote, we are not in the business of putting cock rings in the hands of little girls. <laughs> this is the greatest. Ooh, oh, yeah. they should have just kept quiet about it. Yeah. <laughs> Earring Magic Can was on the shelves for only six weeks until it was pulled. And in those six weeks, parents were upset the elderly were mad. Christians were furious. But gay people loved it. <laughs> Earring Magic Ken became the highest grossing Barbie doll ever sold ever. Nice. I, I, I Finding out about it, I kind of want one now. I want one. Yeah. I've, oh. I've got a number of pictures. Um. Oh. Two weeks ago, it's interesting that you say that you want one because two weeks ago I looked it up on eBay, and prices, some of them were in the like uh, twenty four, twenty five dollar uh, earring pin. range. Yeah. Most of them were around like forty, fifty, seventy five, eighty two dollars. <laughs> one of them, one of them was going for five hundred dollars. Wow! And Holy they all shit. say. Like all the listings that I have here, vintage 1992 Barbie earring magic gay Ken doll. Yeah. Uh, earring magic Ken Barbie doll with clip on earrings, parentheses, gay, parentheses. Original gay, question mark, question mark, Ken, highly collectible earring magic from 90s. Yeah. Yeah, no. Gay, question mark? There's, <laughs> they made a gay Ken. That that comes with two cock rings, and it's the greatest thing that has ever happened in the history of Barbie. Okay, I found one on eBay, forty one dollars. Yep, there's a shit ton on eBay. Ah, uh, there's one for twenty five, thirty five. Ooh, there's one that's only ten dollars and fifty cents. Ten dollars and fifty cents. But there's two days left. Oh, no. Pictures. Come look at the pictures. I got a bunch of pictures here, Deanna. So, so this is what he looks like close up. There's his uh, left ear, earring, his frosted tips, his leather vest, his He's mesh shirt, and boy. that necklace right there. Huh? But then in the box, if you take a close look right there in the pocket, that's the one that he had sewn on to his leather vest. So, Ken is a bottom. They did, and it was, they did have one on Amazon. Kid. And then the package says earring magic Barbie, Barbie and Ken charms for your earring. But the thing is, they never made a Barbie. Yeah, right. They never made said, an earring magic Barbie. No, but the earrings say one says Ken and one says Barbie. Yeah, 
Yeah, if they oh, if they ended up making an earring I magic Barbie. Some butch lesbian Barbie. Yeah, <laughs> if I if they yeah, made that's an what, earring, yeah, that's what I was thinking. It would have to be Barbie in jeans with like a flannel shirt. Yep. Really <gasps> her hair you? slicked back. That's yeah. all I wear. Birkenstocks and uh an Annie DeFranco album. That would be earring magic Barbie. Yeah. Like lesbian Barbie. Yeah. I love that. This is this is my favorite story, and I'm so excited. She's got a Band-Aid on her cheek, and nobody knows why. Uh, nice. She comes with three cats. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 would, I would be proud to That'll own the true. biggest fuck-up a company has ever made. Yes. Jenna, can you give me a little sippy cup for her? Yeah. I love the fact that they accidentally made a gay Ken. <laughs> Oh Somebody yeah, had to have known. <laughs> yeah, they decided to research coolness by sending people to raves, which were at the time mostly hosted and attended by gay men. So they, <laughs> so they ended up taking notes on the fashions of gay men in 1993. Somebody had to have known. I, I, I don't. I, I don't know where any of this. Is yeah, I, I, so I'm you're saying that like in the Mattel Corporation, there was one closeted man that was there, like, somebody, oh, they would, yeah. Time. Somebody had to fucking know. Yeah. Like gay people existed back then. I'm sure one of them worked there. One somebody of the okay, somebody I, who got hassled for their vacation time just sat back and just like, I'm just gonna let this happen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I I'm I'm reading the uh reviews on Amazon. There we go. Uh huh. What are the reviews like? Oh mostly Okay, so this th it's not available to purchase on Amazon anymore. It's currently unavailable, but there are people who did buy it and they really liked it. One person bought it for her twenty fifth birthday, and uh, yeah, one person said if he had all his mail parts, I'm sure there would be one <laughs> on the sea. Yes, yeah, see the sea. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's gay Ken. Come on. It's why I bought it. It's why you're buying it. This thing is awesome. Yeah. 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 It's one that's sort of like really long. Well, with a whole explanation, like what you just said. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love the story. Yes. This is a great story. I've, I've been, and I've been sitting on this for a while too. So I'm really excited to finally. Be able to tell the story of Earring Magic Ken. Very nice. To y'all. Told me about it like two weeks ago. Yeah, no, I know. I've been yeah, I've been sitting on this for a while. <clears throat> and that is it for Steve's historical approximations. Shap this week. Next week there will be no Shap to give us more time to uh, obsess over uh, supernatural and Scooby Natural. But join us two weeks from now for more Steve's historical. Approximations. <laughs>